Topic 4.7, Regulation of the Cell Cycle. Describe the role that checkpoints play in regulating the cell cycle. What are cyclins and cyclin-dependent kinases? What's the connection between cell division and cancer? What are the two types of genetic mutations that are connected to cancer? I'm Mr. W from learn-biology.com, where we believe that interaction and feedback is what leads to deep, substantial learning. We're so sure of that, that we provide a money-back guarantee that comes with your subscription. Describe the role that checkpoints play in regulating the cell cycle. Cell cycle checkpoints are moments when the cell checks its internal conditions and decides whether to progress to the next phase of the cell cycle. If certain molecules are in the right concentration, then the cell continues through the cell cycle. And if not, the cell moves into G0 or might initiate what's called apoptosis. We'll explain that in a moment, which is called programmed cell death. The primary checkpoints to know about for AP bio are the G1 checkpoint over here, the G2 checkpoint, and the M checkpoint. What is apoptosis? I've talked about that several times. Note that the second P is silent. Apoptosis is programmed cell death. It's part of a signaling cascade that involves the mitochondria and the nucleus. It's highly regulated, which is very different from cell death that results from traumatic cell injury. Cells are broken down into cytoplasmic fragments that are called blebs. You can see some of those over here and over here. And blebs are consumed by cells of the immune system, preventing cellular debris and enzymes from damaging nearby cells. What are cyclins and cyclin-dependent kinases? Cyclins and cyclin-dependent kinases are important internal regulators of the cell cycle. The cell cycle is regulated by outside signals, but also by internal conditions. Cyclins are molecules whose concentration rises and falls throughout the cell cycle. So like, for example, you can see that cyclin E rises right before the S phase. Cyclin A rises right before G2. The cell has mechanisms to read the level of these cyclin concentrations. Kinases, which we discussed previously in the context of cell communication, those are molecules that activate other molecules, often by phosphorylating them. They're not shown. And cyclin-dependent kinases, or CDKs, are kinases that respond to rising and falling levels of cyclin levels. Now we're going to put that all together and see what some of the mechanisms are that regulate cell division. Explain how the interactions between cyclins and cyclin-dependent kinases control the cell cycle. So CDKs, here they are over here, are present at a constant level throughout the cell cycle. By contrast, the level of cyclins that we saw in the previous slide rise and fall. When cyclin levels are high, the cyclins bind with CDKs to form a complex called maturation promoting factor. But a good way to remember that is just think of it as mitosis promoting factor. Because once you have MPF, that allows the cell to pass through the G2 checkpoint and actually divide. During M phase, however, the cyclin is broken down and that allows the process to repeat in each daughter cell when it grows to the appropriate size and gets ready for cell division. We talked about the cell cycle. Now let's talk about dysregulation of the cell cycle. What's the connection between cell division and cancer? What are the two types of genetic mutations that are connected to cancer? Cancer is a disease of unregulated cell division. As opposed to cells staying in place doing what they're supposed to do, they become rogue players pursuing their own destiny at the cost of the organism. Mutations in genes that are called proto-oncogenes increase cell division by creating too many growth factors. Growth factors are things that stimulate cell division within a cell itself or within other cells. And there are other kinds of genes that are called tumor suppressor genes, and what they do is they remove cell division inhibitors, the kind of checkpoints that we've seen in previous slides. So in normal cells, you have the breaks, those are tumor suppressors, and you have the accelerator. Those are growth factors, but they act at appropriate times. When cells become cancerous, it can be for 
one of two or actually both reasons. You can have mutated tumor suppressors that can't prevent cell division, even when cell division shouldn't be happening. And you have growth factors that promote cell division at unneeded moments. Are you looking for a better way to study for the AP Bio exam and to get an A in your AP Bio course? At learn-biology.com, we've got exactly that. We've got quizzes, we've got flashcards, we've got interactive tutorials that'll help you master the material that you're studying. We have comprehensive reviews for the AP Bio exam. We'll help you switch from overwhelmed to outstanding student. See you on learn-biology.com. Describe how a mutation in the ROS proto-oncogene can induce a non-cancerous cell to become cancerous. What we're gonna do now is really cool because we're gonna connect what we've learned about the cell cycle and its control to what we learned about previously relating to cell communication. So ROS is a G protein over here, and as a proto-oncogene, it only becomes active when an outside growth signal binds with ROS's coupled receptors. So here we have binding that activates ROS, it picks up GTP, that sets off a phosphorylation cascade, and that leads to cell division. So this is in a healthy, normal system. ROS only gets activated when there's a ligand. When ROS becomes cancerous, when it mutates from a proto-oncogene to an oncogene, then it becomes constitutively active. And constitutively means it's part of its nature to be active. Normal ROS is only active, it only binds GTP when the receptor binds a ligand. But this ROS, which is an oncogene, is constitutively active. It's binding GTP even in the absence of a growth signal. And because it's always active, the growth factor over here is overproduced, and that results in too much cell division. This is connected with about 30% of human cancers. Describe how a mutation in a tumor suppressor gene such as P53 can contribute to the development of cancer. P53 is a tumor suppressor gene. When cells experience DNA damage, a signaling cascade activates P53. So here we have DNA damage, it's detected, there's a signaling cascade, and now P53 is activated. If the damage can be repaired, then what P53 will do is it'll halt the cell cycle while DNA repair enzymes fix the damage. So we're gonna fix up the DNA, that's what's happening over here. If the damage is too great, then P53 will initiate a whole signaling cascade that'll cause the cell to initiate apoptosis. So either we have repaired DNA that occurs while the cell cycle is halted, or the cell will self-destruct. Cancer's been prevented. If mutations lead P53 to become non-functional, then the cell will continue to divide even with damaged DNA. So here we have DNA damage, it's been detected, but P53 can't do anything about it. Therefore, there is no stop signal. The cell will continue to divide, and that'll increase the chance of the cell acquiring further mutations that can lead it to become cancerous. Again, dysregulation of a signaling cascade, dysregulation of a cell cycle repair mechanism leading to cancer. Here are your next moves on your journey to AP bio success. Number one, Go to learn-biology.com, sign up for a free trial of our AP Bio curriculum. We guarantee you're four or five. And then watch this next video.